Planned City by Lisa Pitai A Planned City discusses the history and context of Ciudad Guyon and why its planning in 1960s was unsuccessful. She discusses three possible explanations. For Pitai, the reason why the planning of the area became unsuccessful was because the planners did not include the locals in the process and gave importance to power and resource to large corporate bodies. Ciudad Guyan in Venezuela was to be the center of industrial growth pole. The purpose of the city was economic growth and decentralization of development away from the capital. The planning of the city was characterized to be strikingly large buildings in sparsely developed area excludes the poor in the planning control and an awkward inhuman quality place to live. Ciudad Guyan was a petroleum-driven economic growth for three decades. It started urbanizing rapidly and because it produces oil, 22% of Venezuela's GNP goes to U.S. companies and 90% to foreign exchange. The population of Ciudad Guyon was 350,000 and what the planners did was far from what they wanted the city to be. At the eastern side, San Felix had a plaza, market, and shanty town settlement. While at the western side was Puerto Ordaz, where still mills, office blocks, and agencies are located. Residential settlements for both high and middle income groups were provided. However, because of the oil boom in Ciudad Guyon, the developers overbuilt apartments that were too expensive even for the well-paid people and thus became one of the empty projects. Problems start to rise at the area such as major industries are in debt and managerial concerns. When oil price rise in 1973, more than $10 billion was spent to Guyon for the expansion of steel mill and production of electricity and alumino. But the agencies lack managerial capacity and mismanage the executing of the projects. But the problem of the city was not only losing the money. The city was lacking all four counts which are economic efficiency, amenity, social equity, and community. Three quarters of the population live at the eastern part of Ciudad Guyon, while two-thirds of the job offered at the city is located at the western part. Majority of the working population had to commute across the city through a bridge, making it very inefficient for people to travel at both ends every day. Both sides of the city lack amenity. The eastern side consists of settlements for the working class. Streets are cheaply paved and they lack adequate drainage. Also, the system of education lacks capacity to accommodate a number of students for elementary and high school. At the western side, where the privileged class live, high-rise apartment buildings were scattered without pedestrian access trees and gardens, and lacks places for meeting and collective amusement. It also lacks equity as the development agency invested 39 times to Puerto Ordaz. In 1983, the Urban Development Agency pointed out factors that created social segregation within the urban area. First, natural barriers because of the rivers. Second, Zoning segregated the people. Third, social economic homogeneity of the residential area. And lastly, autonomy of the state owned industrial enterprises. All these factors point out that the city lacks the sense of community. One problem why the city turned out to be a disappointment was that it did not agree to be livable. To explain the undesirable outcome of the messed up planning, the people and institution failed to obey and enforce the plans. 
Also, at the beginning of the planning process, they did not foresee that people keep moving in and messing up the planned city that became the basic reason for the separation between the rich and the poor and the contrast on the settlement on the east and west. Second explanation is the failure of the planners to control urban growth. They tried directing and channeling it and view it not as a static design, but rather a path of growth. Nature, rate, quality and quantity of urban change should be the idea of the planning process. The production of plan as a sense of set of visually displayed decisions to the locations of activities was not sufficient to redirect them. Third view was that the planners were snob. The unrealistic development of the city did not recognize the needs of the poor and low status people. This attitude kept the workers at one end and the need for them to commute up to the other end. The evidence of this endemic snobbery tells how San Felix, the eastern side, is terribly planned compared to the counterpart area Puerto Ordaz, which was well planned. These three interpretations are interrelated, which drive the planning process towards formalism, which opened a way for the unplanned to counter the existing plan of the city. The planners were very idealistic in the planning process by constructing the planning activities that enables them to feel they were serving an essential noble purpose. The focus of the design was to convert the city into a monument of idea of progress. The good sign and the value of amenity made it possible of an undivided community interest in the planning process. The heart of the city, also known as the center of the city, broke the barriers and the division of the classes. Finally, the organization of an interdisciplinary team addresses the planning involves social issues as a technique of liberality.